Hey everybody, today I have something really awesome to share with you. This is parallax in Canvas. Now before we get into discussing the parallax effect, I'll just mention that you'll need to either have access to your institution's theme editor, or you'll need to work with somebody who has access to the theme editor. It's a really interesting concept, and it takes a little bit of time to understand fully what's going on, but let me show you the effects. As I scroll down, you can see that the content scrolls, but the picture seems to stay the same until it gets to this other picture. So the pictures are fixed on the page, but the elements all scroll, and so it gives this effect that the foreground is traveling at a different pace than the background, and I can swap from one picture to another as I scroll up and down. So parallax scrolling is a website trend where the background content is moved at a different speed than the foreground content when you're scrolling. In this case, the background content is absolutely fixed while everything else on the page moves along. So let's look at a few other examples of what you could do with parallax. So here's a simple parallax effect. I have a picture with an umbrella, and as I scroll, I have different course content, and it looks like it's hovering above the picture, that the picture's back there, and then all of these objectives and all of the, the course learning objectives and program objectives, all of the content is just floating in front of the picture. So here's another effect that you could have. Same thing, I have the course content, but every once in a while the picture switches. And finally, I want to show you an example of just things that you can do with various pictures, just to give you some ideas of what you might do with a parallax effect if you had it in your Canvas course. So here's a fixed picture. This is a parallax picture, it's not gonna move. And then I have another picture that's a regular picture and it looks like it's just floating right in front of it. This picture is scrolling by while the umbrella picture is fixed in the background. Here's another interaction where the traveler is also parallax and so it gives it the effect that it's being revealed as it, as it scrolls on the screen. And then I wanted to have some fun also. There's a photographer who took photos of the four different seasons at the same spot. And so here's the spring photo. And then I can wipe up and get the summer photo, keep going for the autumn photo, and then keep going for the winter photo. I thought that was an interesting effect. And so I took those photos also and I created something else. So here's the spring photo and then I can wipe along and then it converts to winter. And so I can go back and forth and it's almost as if the page on canvas is converting from one to another. And then the last interaction I wanted to do is create this parallax photo, but then have windows of the other photos. So here's a, just a hint of what summer would be. Here's a hint of autumn and then here's a hint of winter. And again, you can scroll up and down so you can, can get this effect. I think it's really interesting. So in order to get the parallax effect, you're going to have to go into your theme editor and enter four lines of code. So go into the admin tools, go to themes and open your theme editor. And here in the upload tab, you have access to the CSS file. What you're going to want to put in the CSS is you're going to want to add this line right here. And you can call it whatever you want. You can define the class. I define the class as parallax. And then you'll want these codes. You'll want the background attachment fixed. You'll want the background position centered. You want background repeats to be no repeat. And then the background size cover. So that's it. Just put that bit of code in your current CSS file and upload it to your instance. And everything else you can build on your Canvas page. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look for some pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a picture. I'm just going to search for Unsplash. Maybe I'll search for some scenery. What do you think would be interesting? Maybe this pier. So I'll go ahead and enter that, and then I'll put in another thing of scenery as well. Upload course. And maybe this one, because it's I just want to get some contrast in colors and everything. So I'm going to hop over to the HTML editor. I have my two pictures up here, but I'm going to start building my code. And this is how I'm going to get a parallax picture. I'm going to use this code. <clears throat> so it's a div and I have the class as parallax. That's the code that we just put into our CSS editor. So I need to make sure that I'm calling that code and then I have a styling and I have a background image and this is the URL to the image that I want. And so in this case, I'm going to copy this URL that we just grabbed from Unsplash. I'm gonna cut that, I can go ahead and delete that and then I'm going to put in my image. 
Now here's an important thing. You have to define a height and a width. For me, I think the width should just be 100%. That way it'll be as wide as the screen and then you don't have to worry about it. But the height, you want to specify that. It can be 800 pixels, it can be 200 pixels. And I'll talk about what this looks like in terms of on the page. I'm gonna leave this one at 800 pixels and a width of 100%. And then you need to have this little bit of code right here, ampersand NBSP semicolon. That's a non-breaking space. And then you close the div. You have to have that space in there. Otherwise, when you save the page, Canvas is just going to delete this div. They're going to say there's nothing in that div because there's just no content. And so we're just going to delete that. And so you definitely want to have that div. So now that's the first picture. That's going to be a parallax picture. And I want another parallax picture. So I'll go ahead and copy this code and paste it there. And then I'm going to copy the second image. I'll cut that and delete it. And then I'm going to replace the URL right here with that new URL. Now this one, just for this example, I'm going to change the height to 400 pixels instead of 800 pixels. So it's going to be a more narrow window. And then what I want to do is I want to copy this picture again, and I'm going to put that underneath it. So essentially I'm going to have three pictures, but it's going to look like there's two pictures. I'll show you what that is. The first picture is going to be 800 pixels high and 100 pixels wide. And then another picture is going to come up from that. Uh, and it's going to be 400 pixels high, also 100% wide. And then the last one will be 800 pixels. So let's just see what that looks like. I have three pictures. It's really just going to look like two pictures though. So here's the first picture. And as I scroll, I have the second picture. And then there's that first picture again. So it looks like this pier is on the background and then the scenery right here, all of this landscape is floating on top of the scenery there, on top of the pier. Now let's look at this side by side. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate. Let me just adjust some things here. We're gonna edit this, look at the code once again. All right, so what I have is I have this div with the class parallax, which means I'm telling them that whatever is in here, that picture is going to stay static while everything else moves. And then I have the style, I have the background image right here. And so I'm saying, this is the image that I want. And then the height of 800 pixels is this height from the top of the picture to the bottom of the picture. And if I had said 400 pixels, then it would be from the top to where we see the middle. That's what the picture would be. And then the space, we don't actually see that on the page, but we just need it. And so then as I scroll along, I can see, okay, there's another picture and that's this div right here. And here's the link to the background. This one's only 400 pixels high. So what I'm doing is defining the window. I'm saying this element needs to be 400 pixels high and it's gonna be 100% wide. And so this is the window. And if that was actually a picture, then the picture would be moving along. But since it's parallax, the picture is static and so it's kind of like the picture is back there and we cut a hole in the browser and so we're peeking at the picture but then the hole moves along with the page and so it looks like the picture is moving and that's what gives it that parallax effect and then at the bottom here i'm saying i want that same element i want that picture that first picture of the pier i want that underneath it and so what we're looking at is actually three different pictures but it looks like it's two pictures because it looks like there's a one background picture and then this green scenery is hovering over the other picture. Now I could make a change to that. Let's delete this last picture and let's just have the second picture and we'll keep that at 800 pixels and I'll go ahead and save this. All right, so now you can just see that it just swaps out one picture for another picture. All right, let's try some other effects. I'm going to delete that. Let's just get a different picture just so that we can have some fun. Let's see what they have for libraries. Looks like this might be a good one. Let's grab that picture. All right, so I have the picture there. We're gonna grab the code. So here's my code. I'm gonna grab the link to the picture, which is right here, and I'll copy that. All right, so we'll start with a picture. Now, how tall do I want the picture to be? I think for this one, let's say 400 pixels. And I want to break up the picture with some text. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a div and I'm going to put some padding in the div. So the padding is 50 pixels, 80 pixels. What that means is that 
on the top and bottom, I'm going to have 50 pixels of padding. On the left and right, there will be 80 pixels of padding. The reason why is because I'm going to put some text in there, and I don't want the text to be right up against the top and right up against the sides. I want it to float sort of in the middle. So now I'm going to put an H3. We're going to have a header. So I'm going to put some code. I want to style it. I want it to be centered, and I want the font to be pretty big. And I could call this something like a course description and then close out. So this is a header three. In reality, it could be a header two. You can make it whatever you want. And then I want a paragraph and I'm going to put some boilerplate text for the paragraph, but this could be content in your course. And then I'll go ahead and close out that div. So this is a little section of text where it's going to have some padding. It's not very sophisticated, but it's going to have some padding. The header is going to be centered. It'll be a larger font. And then I have a paragraph and then a div. And so that's it. Now I'm going to copy this picture and I'm going to put it underneath that little bit right there. And so it's 400 pixels high and then we're going to get this content right here. And the content, I don't know how high this is going to be. It depends on the screen. If it's a mobile device, it's going to be pretty high because all of the words are going to be crunched together. If it's a very large screen, then all the text will be spread out. And so it's not going to be as high. But then once that's done, I'm going to have that picture come back. Now let's go ahead and just copy all of this a couple of times. I'll change out some things. So the second one will be, instead of course description, we'll have, I don't know, module overview. And then I'll copy it again. And then maybe I could have um, course outcomes or objectives. And so if you understand the concept of this code, we're going to have a picture. And then as we scroll, we'll have it'll be broken up by some text. And then we'll see that picture again. And it'll be broken up by some more text. We'll see that picture again broken up by a third group of text, and then we'll finish with that picture. And maybe this last picture, let's make that 800 pixels high. So it sort of ends on a tall picture. And let's go ahead and save this and see what we are looking at. All right, so here's our library, the library background, and then I see course description. Just for fun, let's, um, let's maximize that screen a little bit. All right, so as I'm scrolling along, I have the course description, and you can see the padding that I added. I put I believe it was 50 pixels on the top and the bottom, and then 80 pixels from the left and from the right, so that the, the words are right in the center of the page. Otherwise, course description would be right in the top corner, and it would be, in fact, I thought I text aligned that center. I, I might have written that differently. But yeah, I don't want the words to be right up against the edges. I want them to kind of float. And in fact, let's look at this before we move on. Uh, let's see how responsive it is. So as I float, you can see that the image, it stays at 400 pixels tall. It's 100% wide, regardless of how wide the screen is. And part of the image, it just floats off screen to accommodate. It doesn't get smaller, it's fixed. And the text here, it'll this little box, this div, will get taller or shorter based on how many words there are, how crunched the words are. So right here, it's pretty tall. When I widen it, then this gets more narrow. And if I full screen it, then it's pretty narrow. So let's keep scrolling. Here are different sections. We have the course description, the module overview, the course outcomes. And you can see that these elements just float right over the picture. And it looks, it gives the effect that it's just one picture in the background and that these are elements that are just floating on top of the picture. In reality, you wrote the code with me. So you know that this is one picture, one parallax picture that's 400 pixels tall. And then we have another one that's 400 pixels tall. But since the picture in the background never moves, it's fixed, then it gives the illusion that it's all a single picture. So here's another picture. And then remember that last picture, we made it 800 pixels tall. And so when we finish the page, then we see more of the bookshelf. It gets revealed. But that's a very interesting effect. Now let's do it one step further. Let's go ahead and edit this page. At the very top, I'm going to just to make it easy for me, I'm going to go ahead and put some content at the top of the page just so I can get my cursor up there cleanly. And let's look for one other picture. I'm going to upload the images, head over to Unsplash, and let's get something completely opposite from a bookshelf. Let's get some scenery. Here's something really pretty. Let's get some mountain scenery. Here's the code to that picture. I'll go ahead and copy that, and then I'll just delete all the rest of this stuff here. And let's change one of these pictures. All right, so we have the bookshelf right here, and then we have this div with the content, and then we have another bookshelf, some more content, 
After this, let's make this the new picture. Let's break up the library and put some scenery in there. So I'm going to copy that out and paste in the new picture. And this time I want to make that 800 pixels tall. I want to make it pretty big. So let's save it and see what kind of effect that has. So at first we have the library and we have the course description, the module overview, and then the module overview brings us to this other picture. And you want to make sure that the pictures you use are really high resolution. And then it brings it right back to the library. So we get to take a break. It's like library, library. Oh, here's some mountains at a sunset or sunrise. And then back to the library. Now, as a side note, I just want to mention that Unsplash is awesome. I'm finding that these pictures are a little bit less high resolution than I would like. I'm seeing that this is a little bit artifacted, a little pixelated. And so I'll show you something else. I'm going to go to the actual unsplash.com website and I'm going to search for scenery on here. I think the plugin is great in Canvas, but I'm going to look for something that's a little more high resolution. Here's that same picture. I'm going to just copy this image address and see if I can get that a little bit higher resolution than it is. If we look at, here's the picture. I'm going to replace this URL with what I found on the Unsplash website and save that, see if I can get it a little higher resolution. There we go. I like that a lot better. Let's even bump it up so it can be a little more full screen. Yeah, so that's something I'm just discovering with you right now is that the plugin is great for Canvas, but if you really want to enlarge these pictures, if you really want it to take up a lot of real estate on a large monitor, then perhaps you would want to just go to the Unsplash website and get the picture from there. Now, if you're using the images just for something that fills half the screen or it's just going to be a, a little supplemental image, then it doesn't really matter. I think that's high enough resolution, but I'm definitely noticing a difference on my screen that this code that I grabbed right from the actual website is, I, I think it's really high resolution. So you can either copy the code, copy the image address, or you can download it and then upload it into Canvas either way. So let's continue playing with this and do some of the other interactions that I showed you a moment ago. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete some of these things. And let's do the interaction where we have one picture. I'm going to make this 800 pixels tall. And then we have the content here. And then we expose the new picture. And I'm even going to take away some of this text here. And so we'll say instead of course description, I don't know, we could say we can say library becomes scenery and then it switches over to the scenery picture. All right, so here's our library and then it switches to the library becomes scenery. So that's really interesting. I'm even going to maybe make these a little bit taller. Let's go in here and make this an even thousand pixels. And I'll tell you why. I think that'll be an interesting effect because right now you can see all of this content, all of the the things above, and as you're scrolling, it almost takes away from some of the illusion. If we make it really tall, and then, because you can see the global navigation, it doesn't scroll as you scroll. The only thing that's moving once we get past, once we get rid of all of this top stuff, is the scroll bar. And so it gives a really interesting illusion. Let's do another thing. I'm going to take out those words. I'm going to keep this image right here, but we're going to bump this down like I did in the other interaction to maybe 300 pixels. In fact, let's make it 250 pixels. And then I'm going to take the first image and I'm going to copy it and we're going to put it underneath. So before I hit save, what do you think this is going to do? Let's walk through it. So first we have the image. This is a background image. It's parallax. It's 1000 pixels tall, so it's essentially, on most monitors, it's going to take up the entirety of the screen. And these numbers are kind of exaggerated. You really wouldn't want something to be 1000 pixels tall because on mobile, they're going to have to scroll for half a day in order for them to get to the next content. We're just having fun with this interaction to, to play with things. So we have this library picture. It's 1000 pixels tall, which means I scroll a bit, and then we're going to get this other parallax picture which is 250 pixels tall, but it's also parallax. So it's going as we scroll up, the picture will scroll up as well. And then we end up with this picture right here. So let's save that and let's see what kind of effects we have. So here's our library, our thousand pixel tall picture of the library. 
and then we can see the scenery scrolling up. The library stays in the background since I have three pictures. The first one and the third one are the library and they're both a thousand pixels tall. So it looks like it's just a giant library picture in the background. And as we scroll up, we can see the scenery. All right, so let's try something else. I'm gonna copy these two things. We're gonna paste it underneath. And this time I don't want the picture to be parallax. I actually want it to be an image. So I'm gonna start writing an image tab. I'm gonna put a style and I want that to be 250 pixels high and I want it to be 100% wide. Now that's gonna look bad. What I'm doing is I'm saying this is only 250 pixels high and so it should be like 16 by nine and I don't know what the math is for there but it should be about 200 pixels wide but I'm forcing it to be 100 pixels wide so it's going to be really short and fat. It's gonna look bad but just conceptually you can get the gist. I'm gonna put a source and the source is the HTTP, the website for the picture that we got. So here's the end of that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of this. Now quick side note, some of you might've already seen what I did wrong here. If you'll notice everything here is blue. This should be, it should have green, it should have blue, it should have the red and the green. You notice that it's all blue. So I did something wrong. And as I look here, I have the source, it's between the quotation marks. And so then I look at style, quotation mark, and notice I didn't put the second quotation mark. So I need to close that off. When I close that off, then I can see the colors come back. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and see what we did. So here's our bookshelf, here's that parallax scenery. And let's see what the next scenery looks like. Here's the next scenery and it floats over. And I noticed, let's fix this up a little bit. So I'm noticing there's some space between the two pictures. So that really disrupts the illusion for one. And also I'm noticing some space over here on the right, which I think is from using this hamburger menu. So it pushes it over. So let's fix that a little bit. Let me show you how I will fix that. So we're gonna hop over to the HTML editor. And so for one, I'm going to put a margin and the margin is going to be, let's go with negative 10 pixels. So instead of putting space between the picture and the other elements, I'm putting negative space between those elements. And then let's go ahead and change this width from 100 because when we were collapsing the menu, it wasn't adjusting. So I'm gonna put a minimum width of 100. So no matter what the screen, it always has to be at least 100% wide is what I'm saying. And so let's save that and see if that did what I want it to do. All right, scrolling, we have the parallax picture. And now we have that picture. In reality, that's still not what I want. In fact, it's kind of screwing up left and right. So I'm gonna try one more thing and I need a little bit more space. 10 pixels wasn't enough. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is part of the problem solving process when you're working with code. I'm gonna hop back over here. I think I have one last thing that I need to do. So I'm going to put uh, margin, we're gonna bump that up to 20 pixels. Let's just make sure that we're good. But on the left and the right, I don't want any pixels. So what this is saying is margin negative 20, zero, is saying top and bottom and left and right. So on the top and the bottom, I want negative 20 pixels. So essentially I want those library picture, pictures to come underneath this picture, but I don't want the left and the right to be messed with. So those changes should be what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna collapse the side menu. Let's hop down half the screen and look at that once again. All right, there's the effect that I want. And so this looks like it's just the picture and the picture is floating over the bookshelf. And that's the difference between having a regular image and a non-parallaxed image. This regular image, it looks like it just floats right on top. Whereas the parallax one, it also is floating on top, but it's interesting because it's revealing the scenery as it goes along. Very fun effect. There's lots of applications. You can use this to break up your syllabus. You could use it to reveal different elements. As I was showing this to my wife, then she was mentioning, yeah, this could totally be a, a makeup before and after. You know, you have a bar and here's without makeup, here's with makeup. You can have it reveal. I was thinking more in the lines of you could have a PowerPoint slide and save it as an image and then have another PowerPoint slide where you mark up different things and then you can reveal it that way. Or, you know, it could just be an interesting way to divide up your screen, the content on your screen. In fact, I didn't even think about something, but let's explore that off the top of my head. I'm gonna delete all of this and let's make this instead like a hundred pixels high, this parallax right there. And then I'm gonna create some content 
just regular content. So this could be, you know, the parts of the syllabus or something. And then I'll just copy and paste this a bunch of times. So here are three, four different sections. And you'll pretend like this content is part of your page, your content page. And then you have this div here is separating the content. Let's go ahead and save that. And that's kind of fun. Maybe we can dress it up a little bit more, put a, a paragraph in there, add another picture. Maybe I'll put that picture in there, but I'm going to style it a little bit and we're going to float it to the right. Width of maybe 300 pixels. And I'll just replace that for that next section as well. We'll save that and it looks like, yeah, we're gonna need to do some formatting and stuff, but that could be an, an interesting effect. Even 100 pixels might even be a little tall. Let's see what 50 pixels might do. And you can explore different picture options as well. It doesn't have to be the library. But yeah, I'm not sure. The library is a little bit busy, so that might not be the best picture for this concept. Maybe even a gradient. Like if you were to have a giant gradient that went from one color to another color, that could be really interesting. And then it would just shift the colors as you go up. Let's do that. I know at the risk of this tutorial getting pretty long and that's bad form, but I just want to explore this last thing. I'm going to put a shape here. I'm in PowerPoint. I'm going to put no for the outline for the shape fill. Let's go ahead and give it a gradient. I'm going to have it go from left corner to right corner. I'm going to format the shape, format the gradient. And for over here, I'm going to put this as green. Great, so something like that. Let's just get a shape that's kind of a gradient. I'm going to save this. Okay, so I'm going to save this maybe as a JPEG. And then we'll go in here. I'm just going to hop up to the top and give myself some space to work with. So I can put my cursor there. We'll, we'll upload that picture. I'll drop it in here, mark it as decorative, and submit that. Now it's in Canvas, and I have the HTTP. So I'll go ahead and cut that. And then I will replace the URL for all of these with that URL. All right, so that should look good. Let's save that, just see what that looks like. That's pretty interesting. So you can see how these separators go from dark and then as I progress up, then it becomes lighter. Just so I can see more of the evolution. Let's go in there one more time and copy and paste all that text at the bottom. So copy, paste, paste. I'm just going to paste a whole bunch of times just so that we can scroll up the screen as much as we want. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool effect. That's just something I thought of right now as we're navigating together. It's so subtle that your students might not even notice, but I think in the back of the mind, they'll really appreciate. They'll think that something is really cool about this page, and I don't quite understand what it is, but I really like it. So it all starts with this little bit of code that you put up into your theme editor. And from there, there are so many possibilities of what you can do with these interactions. You know, if this has inspired you and you do something parallax in your own course, I would really like to hear from you. Let me know in the chat below, and I'd really like to explore the various ways that parallax can be incorporated into your courses. The basic code that we've looked at today, I'm going to put it in our blog at howtocanvas.com. So look it up right there, grab it, put it into your own Canvas course, and then work to modify it. As always, follow our social media channels and make sure you subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Ring the bell for notifications. I have some fun stuff planned for us in the coming weeks, so I definitely want you to join me as we explore Canvas together. And as always, I want to tell you happy teaching and learning.